there are two types of line violations, foot faults and center line violations. A foot fault is when the server contacts the serve while in contact with the floor outside the service area or after having left the floor while outside the service area. A center line violation occurs when a player illegally contacts the opponent's court during a rally. Although sometimes thought of as a line violation, a player other than the server contacting the floor outside the court boundaries at the time of the serve is illegal alignment and not a line violation. The remainder of this video will focus on center line violations. The line violation signal is given by using the index finger of the hand on the offending team's side to point to the line on which the violation occurred. For center line violations, the referees will point at the center line. It is not necessary to point to the spot where the violation occurred, merely point to the line. This signal is also used when the ball, other than the serve, passes under the net. When the fault is called by the second referee, the official blows the whistle and moves to the offending team's side, making sure to take a position clear of the standard before signaling the nature of the fault. It is very important that the second referee move to the offending team's side of the net and use the proper hand to signal the violation when calling a fault. If the second referee uses the hand nearest the net when signaling, it could leave the first referee unsure of whether the second referee is standing on the wrong side of the net or is using the wrong hand. In either case, the signal by the first referee may be a violation by the wrong team. The second referee does not approach the court when making the call, remaining at their normal position. The first referee awards the point if there was no conflicting call and signals the fault if it was not apparent. The second referee mirrors the point signal but does not repeat the fault signal. The center line rule may be one of the most misunderstood rules. This misunderstanding might be due to the fact that the rule used for high school play is different than rules for club or collegiate play. The National Federation rule is fairly simple. A player may contact the opponent's court with one or both hands and or feet provided part of the hand or foot remains on or above the center line. If the extremity in contact with the opponent's court is completely beyond the center line or contact is with any other body part other than loose hair, it is a line violation. It should be noted that the court is defined as the part of the floor which is inbounds. It is legal for a player to cross the out-of-bounds extension of the center line as long as the player does not interfere with play by the opposing team. We will now look at a few situations. This is an easy one and one you'll see dozens of times a match. Part of the player's foot is still on the center line, so it's legal. This play is a common situation. When the player comes down, her heel is still above the center line, so it's legal, but once she pivots, her foot is now completely beyond the center line. This is a line violation. This play illustrates why it's very important that the second referee watch the entire play and not shift to something else or transition to the other side of the net until the player has completed their maneuver. It should also be noted that the first referee must resist the urge to watch the players return to the floor. This is the job of the second referee. The first referee must continue to watch play on the ball. The rule is applied the same way when it comes to a player's hand touching the opponent's court. As long as part of the hand remains on or above the center line while in contact with the floor, it's legal. If the hand is in contact with the opponent's court and is no longer on or above the center line, it's a line violation. Contacting the opponent's court with any body part other than a hand, foot, or loose hair is a line violation. In the play on the left, the player's knee is on the center line, however no body part is in contact with the opponent's court, so this is legal. In the play on the right, the player's knee is on the center line, but also in contact with the opponent's court, so this is a line violation. As mentioned earlier, the restrictions regarding the center line end at the court boundaries. Outside the court boundaries, a player may cross the extension of the center line as long as they do not interfere with play by their opponents. In this play, number 14 of the blue team demonstrates good hustle to save an errant dig for a teammate to send over. She's able to play the ball before the ball completely passes the plane of the net. Her momentum then carries her beyond the extension of the center line. There is no interference with an opponent or their ability to play the ball, so this is legal. When judging this play, as long as the player remains on or above a playable area, her position relative to the center line does not matter, only the position of the ball relative to the plane of the net when it is contacted. 
Because the first referee must turn their back to the court in this situation, it may be difficult to judge the position of the ball in relation to the plane of the net. When inspecting the court prior to the match, landmarks such as other court markings should be noted and used for reference. This situation should also be discussed with the second referee prior to the match to determine how the second referee should assist in making this call, by whistling or merely signaling if they are able to determine that the ball traveled beyond the plane of the net outside the antenna. In this situation, the attacker comes down and her right foot is outside the boundary and completely beyond the extension of the center line. The fact that she's between the boundary and the net standard is not relevant. From this view of the same play, we can see that the second referee holds her position and keeps her focus on the attacker's follow-through and landing before transitioning. The attacker didn't make contact with the net, the antenna, or the cable, so the play is legal. In this clip, the player plays the ball and her momentum carries her into the standards padding. Contacting the net or cables is illegal, however contact with the standard padding or referee's platform is legal as long as no advantage is gained and it is not dangerous to the player. In this video, we reviewed the different aspects of the NFHS centerline rule. It should be noted that the word over was not used in reference to the centerline. Since the word over has different meanings depending on the context in which it is used, the words on, above, and beyond should be used instead.